Hello, it's Leonard Harry, and I'm back with another Top 10 Countdown. This time we've got in my Top 10 Albums of 2023. I've done it in 21, I've done it in 22. If you want to go check them out, you can go check them out there on the channel. However, we are here to count down the Top 10, or my Top 10 Albums, not the Top 10. Although, to be fair, they really should be the Top 10. Top 10s are very hard to curate, they are very hard to narrow down. I have been going back and forth, literally up until the minute I started recording, I swapped somewhere around. So it's been very, very hard. I guess I've classed it. The ones that had impact on me, the ones that just have some songs that absolutely captivated me. The overall vibe and just, I guess, in terms of artistry and things like that. So again, this is just my top 10. You've got yours. Obviously, I want to hear from you guys what yours are down below, so please let me know. But I just want to go through, chat about my favorite songs. I really want to keep these quite concise. I do tend to like bang on a little bit and in reality, we just want to know what your album is, what's your favorite song and why you love it and move on. I mean, that's all we really want at the end of the day. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Like you, I listened to hundreds of albums this year. Some absolutely shook me to my core. Others were nice and others were a bit mediocre. So as always, we have a nice array. 2023 was a very strong year for music, in my opinion. Some absolute bangers. If you're new here, hello, my name is Ben. I react to music. Obviously, if you want to check out my channel, hit subscribe, all that jazz, you can do that. Any of my cards, they are on Patreon. Links are down below if you want to support me and all that jazz. Let's get into it. Number 10, Nicki Minaj, Pink Friday 2. Oh my God, I love this. Absolute slithery, slithery snake their way in. This only came out literally like two, three weeks ago. That's just how good it was for me. It is one of the longest albums I've heard in a long time. It just was a perfect flow through. I love the amount of singing that's on it. I love that from Nikki. I know the album got a lot of mixed reviews. People commented on, should it be a sequel to Pink Friday? I mean, to me, it really did feel like a sequel, like a continuation of her work. It really felt like a greatest hits in terms of just taking the best bits of the songs that I love from the other albums and meshing it all together. I guess you could compare it to like a Taylor Swift's Midnight's in terms of it just sounds so familiar but still sounds so new and so right for what it is. Obviously I'm a little sad boy. I'd probably say my top two would be Last Time I Saw You, Nicki Hendrix. However, I do love Cowgirl. I do love FTCU. Again, I could dribble on. Opening the album with a Billy Sample was just epic. I love the flow through the track listing. It's such an easy album listen. You can listen to it and just chill or you can really tune into the songs that you know are absolutely about I'm the best, you're the worst kind of vibe. It's just such a good array for me. Having petered off from Nicki a bit, I love it because it really just brought me back and gave me the memories of some of my favorite times with her music. Number nine, Tate McRae, Think Later. Miss Tate McRae. Now this is a chickadee I had no idea I would love or vibe or just connect with as much as I did. I had the preconceived idea she was a TikTok chickadee. You guys let me know she isn't. However, Greedy is honestly one of the best TikTok trend songs because it just is still so good. It doesn't sound or get old for me. The album though, it's just quintessential pop chickadee, sad, vibe, angry, juicy, all the stuff that you want from a pop diva. The amount of times I've listened to When On A Like It is absolutely my favorite favorite song on the album. It is just perfection. It can be related to so many different things. Just having that trust broken by someone. This is why we are not alike. We are such different people. Then you've got a song like Plastic Palm Trees, which is just such a grounding, reality-driven song. Although definitely from a perspective of celebrityness, but you can still relate it to your own life. Bangers like Messier, Guilty Conscience. Again, such an easy listen through. And while a lot of the songs are short, it's still hitting the 38 minute, you know, with 14 songs. So it's on the shorter side, but to be honest, as I was listening to it, I was like, it really doesn't matter because the song's still just still full. There's lyrics in there. I love her journey and just the authenticness that she has. And obviously, you know, that's been overshadowed by TikTok. So I love seeing, I guess, just realness. I just love stuff that catches me off guard and puts me in my place. And that's definitely what she did. And yeah, I was so shook at how good the album was. And I've listened to it so many times. When I'm like, I literally had to repeat the entire day. I'm not even exaggerating. The entire day. Banger album. Number eight, Slater, Starfucker Deluxe. Oh my God. All right, Deluxes. If you know me, if you watch my reactions, I really don't listen to Deluxes. I don't really enjoy them. I don't think they add much. However, Miss Slater came up with the Deluxe and this is why I had to call it the Deluxe because it's the entire project now. It absolutely is the version I listen to. I love the track order changing. Oh my God, the song she added elevated it. You were like, how were these not even on the original version? I mean, the title track being an addition is just incredible in itself. Best song, I probably would say Miss Belladonna. It really shook me. It still shooks me to this day. The live performance I saw of her do on YouTube where she's wailing with the mic is just iconic. The encapsulation of the early 2000s, the celebrity vibe. It's the Kim Petrus. It's the Harris Hilton. It's all the juicy stuff, but just elevated to such a darker undertone. You've got those very sexy little psycho in your face songs, but then you've got these really sad ones like Miss Belladonna, dramatic, just like, oh, don't be dramatic. 
Bad. I don't have the vocals. She's got the vocals, the back end. She's got the lyrics there. She just created this world. The visuals are stunning. I wish she had the budget just to create an entire world movie around this album. James Dean, I Love Hollywood, Miss Belladonna, Dramatic. How can you go four songs of back-to-back -back bangerang in a row? Obviously, Star F for the opening. Makeup is the only little dad for me in terms of the first six, but other than that, like, just incredible. Number seven, Nothing But Thieves, Dead Club City. All right, this album I played beyond, beyond the amount of times I was driving just slamming this so loud. It's a band that was introduced to me this year. I listened to all their albums very consecutively, quite close together. So I definitely started to get mixed up with which songs were from which album. I really want to make a playlist of just the best songs and my favorite songs from each album. The conceptualization of this album is incredible. It's my favorite thing. A fake world, a fake city, and just the role in all the stuff, the vibes, the images it conjures within you, their vocal ability. I don't listen to a lot of guy artists and when I do they always hit so hard. The rock, they're like a boy version of Paramore to be fair. Best song on the album for me though, Foreign Language. The feels, it's a bit more of a slower song. The ones that hit, hit like Do You Love Me Yet? Oh my god. Again, the lyrics, the commentary on real life and just the parallels within the Dead Club City. And the closing song, Pop the Balloon. So weird, so bizarre, but so addictive. Like it's an album, again, flow, a lot of these songs, the pattern here is just the flow through and the replayability for me. It's just so easy to really tune in, rock out or just have it there as a comfort. Foreign language, absolute slayer. I mean, even green eyes. I could go on. I really, again, I'm trying to keep it concise and just why you should go and listen to it. It's a rock pop dude about life, about everything. Get some sad moments, some rock out moments. The instruments, the production is absolutely the standout on the album though. You just cannot believe what you're hearing in terms of just the riffs and all the stuff that's happening. It's honestly epic and I'm so glad I got introduced and found the album and I had a new album count this year. It was like all just perfect. The stars aligned and I entered the Dead Cop City and I'm still there rocking out. And I'll probably die in the Dead Cop City. Number six, Ash Nico, oh Weed Killer. <laughs> number six, very number is you can go the best song on the album. <laughs> We've done that playlist, we're gonna check it out. I've done my top 10 track six of 2021, 2022, 2023. However, the sixth album on this top 10 countdown is Miss Ash Nico. Arguably, this could be higher, and maybe some days it would be for me. The biggest letdown for it is the length. Some of the songs are just criminally too short. It's 33 minutes with 13 songs, which is just criminal so unfortunately she just really can't get me any higher just because i'm like well girl you, you leave me wanting more however while i remove the negative the songs are incredible the lyrics i mean she's a lyricist the stuff she does the words she says the way she gags you shocks you like oh my god or just cries with you is incredible i mean best song it's a very hard it's got so many <laughs> i love them oh it should be high it could be it should be maybe it's not i don't know we always love a robbed album on a playlist dying star featuring ethical is incredible. Weed Killer, Choke or Cherry Python, Cheerleader, Worms. I mean, five epic songs out of 13 for me. Absolute top five. I love what she's about. I love watching her interview. She just really is such a connectable person and you just really love hearing her talk. I love how fearless she is. I just love how honest she is as well. Like these songs are so raw, so vulnerable, so personal, so relatable. It just is a very heavy, heavy album. So I guess in that sense, you have to really be in the mood for it. It's such a mood driven album because it is so heavy and if you just want to chill there's not a lot of chill songs on here because it is so confronting it's incredible go listen to it it's yeah it's one of the best albums of the year for sure obviously it's on my list <laughs> number five noah khan stick season will all be here forever all right, now I treat this album as like Gaga's Fame Monster. While it is a deluxe, technically it gets mixed in with six seasons. I've listened to these seven songs on their own more than I have the original album. I reacted to the original album this year, it came out last year, and then these songs came out. So I guess I was already within the hype of, you know, loving him, and then these came out. They are arguably better than a lot of the original songs for me, and in saying that I haven't listened to the original album as much as these. So while it's not an album per se, it really is for me seven songs I would class an album. Drunk Dial is absolutely incredible. The storyline, the image it conjures the vibe this indie down south woodsy foresty you just want to remove yourself from everything the world that he creates for me with just his voice and his production is just incredible call your mom is just beyond anything beyond anything you're gonna go far is beyond anything and then the extended version of the view between villages is just 
yeah, it's masterful. It's just incredible. The entire thing, I've listened to it so, so, so much. Again, it's one you can lean into and really feel it, or it's one that is just a comfort and just creates the aesthetic, the vibe, and just the setting for you or your day. Have some candles burning, go on a walk, all that stuff. It's such a mood-based album for me. His voice is incredible. Everything he does, the lyrics are so hitting. They're so vulnerable. Again, they're so personal. They're so relatable. Bit of a theme here with my album. They either have to really hit me personally, or they just have to be so captivated debating or just gag me and for this one it just yeah I cried so much to what I still have done many a times and it's just got so many quintessential moments and I love voice memos the feel like I said this is just a quintessential indie album it's a great companion to the original but I think it's strong enough to stand on its own with just seven songs number four Chapel Roan the rise and fall of a Midwest princess <laughs> Another very underrated album that I did not think I would like as much as I went into it. Miss Chapel Roan. The album cover, I was like, hmm. Silently, I was like, oh, it looks a bit interesting. I don't know if I'm going to love it as much. And then she blew me out of the water. Honestly, this album is beyond anything. Her as an artist, she is incredible. Her music videos, just the authenticity of her, the way she wants to create safe spaces for people. The song, oh, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. The way she just inserts her personality. Again, the lyrics, the just realness, the authenticness, the stuff where you're just like, yes, this is what we want to hear because this is how we feel. Obviously, it's going to be no surprise, Pink Pony Club is my absolute favorite song on the album. I could just, that's all I'm going to say is Pink Pony Club. Yes, there's some other incredible ones, but Pink Pony Club is it. That's all I need to say. That song shook me to my absolute core. It still gives me chills. It makes me sad. It makes me happy. It makes me hopeful. It makes me inspired. It's just everything a song could possibly be. And the whole album is that the Pink Pony Club is just its core, its spirit. Music videos, again, oh my god, casual kills you. Hot to go, just H O D D O D O. It's fun, it's camp, it's gay, it's fun, it's happy, it's all that wrapped in one and wrapped in this little world of coming from a small town, making it big, and being the most you you could possibly be. It is absolutely standout. And anyone that hasn't heard it, you need to go and listen to it and just have fun and really just let yourself go. Number three, Paramore. This is why. All right, we're here, number three, the top three, Paramore. They actually were my number one album, according to Apple Music. <laughs> they my number one artist, and this was the number one album for me of 2023. However, again, just because I've listened to it the most, I mean, it's a very good album, it's top three. There's a lot of other factors that come into albums and ranking and things like that. This is why, now this is quintessential Paramore with such an ulti indie twist. I mean, I enjoyed the album a lot on first listen, but it is absolutely a grower for me. The re-up just took it to the next level. I listened to Figure Eight Remix on repeat while doing assignments this year. It was absolutely my comfort song. I mean, if you're gonna talk just a set list, you've got You First, Figure Eight, Liar, absolutely incredible three in a row. Figure Eight is absolutely my favorite song of the album, and it's one of my favorite power of songs of all time. The remix, like I said, is just, it just took me there. It's an album that you can flow through, play through on repeat, clearly. It <laughs> It ranked up number one for me. And it's a song you can just really hone in on and just smash out. It's got that comfort. It's got the weirdness. It's got the Haley vibes of, you know, her solo work, but it's got that quintessential Paramore rock. And I think for me, it's just such an awesome progression. When you've been with Paramore for as long as, you know, all of us have who've been there from the beginning or me, like, you know, technically the beginning. It's been so great to see how they progress and definitely is one of my favorite albums by them. And I think that just depends on where you are in life and, you know, your age and or what you've been through or I guess how you've grown up with them or how you introduced them, all that stuff because that's, I think, how their lyrics will hit you at certain times. Also, Big Man Little Dignity is the first one. That, then you first, figure eight, liar, all in a row. It's just incredible. The vulnerability, the personability, how there's always songs that relate to the bands or their life and things that where they're at. It's just, it's so personal. It's just such a strong album. And I was actually shocked that it was my number one album of the year. I mean, it's not wrong, but it definitely, I was like, whoa, I did not expect Paramore. All these years I've been number one artist. And clearly I love Figure Eight because it was my fourth most played song of 2023 and then Big Man Little Dignity was hitting at number five. So absolutely an album that <laughs> has spawned some epic, epic songs for me. Number two, Miley Cyrus, Endless Summer Vacation. I love that so much. All right, number two. Now this is on par with Apple Music. They said it was my second album. I'm saying it's my number two album of 2023. Miss Miley Cyrus, Endless Summer Vacation. 
Incredible, stunning, flowers, obviously incredible, the success it had with that. However, the hidden gems on the album, Violet Chemistry is my favorite song of hers, probably of all time. It is just incredible. It's got those moans from Plastic Hearts. It's got elements of Plastic Hearts, but it's just a bit more mainstreamable, I suppose. Plastic Hearts, honestly, is one of my favorite albums, so this was just like a bit of an elevation. Almost a more mature take on it. Still had some of those rocky, grungier moments, but then just a bit more polished. Jaded, Slays Me, River, you've got Muddy Feet, I absolutely love the feature. <laughs> obviously, I love songs that give you a feature and it's just another feature, but it obviously is. Thousand Miles, I just love the vibe of just driving around in a big old Mercedes. It just, you think I'm crazy? Yeah. Oh, like I just want to listen to the album every time I think about it. Her voice is strong, everything about it. I love the album cover. It actually really inspired me this year. I'm like, you know what? She just encapsulates how you can be dedicated, have strong will, and just get things done for her. You know, obviously having an incredible body and just really empowering self-care and everything that, you know, she's been speaking about. She's not touring because she's like, I don't want to do that. That's not going to make me happy. So I just really love this era of her. It really inspired me just to be like, you know what? If you want to be the best person you want to be, you just got to go out and do it. And this album cover photo just, is, I guess, a very big inspiration there. I think this is definitely some of her best work for me. It's such a beautiful flow through. Like I said, I can listen to this album and just have it there, or I can really hone in and just repeat Violet Chemistry. Oh my God, that chorus just absolutely kills me. That is just the best song, one of her best songs she's ever done. Like Paramosh is an artist you, we've really grown up with, so you've just definitely seen her progression, and this just feels very confident, very at her peak. She's taken the best parts of her previous albums and just given us something endless, really, and the summer vacation out of the album name. It really makes me happy. It makes actually, it's just a really happy album. While there's some beautiful, sad songs on there, it still just makes me happy, and it's just a beautiful comfort. It also makes sense as Violet Chemistry is my third played song of 2023. Number one. Melody Martins, Portals. Number one, we're here. Melody Martins, Portals. Apple Music says it's my number three. I'm telling you it's my number one. Evil, best song on the album, no arguments. It was also my number one song of 23, according to Apple Music. This album, the flow through, the world she created is just in Incredible. The lyrics, the vulnerability, the personalness. Again, there's so many layers to it. You really can just dig deep. You guys have told me so much about it, which has just been incredible. All the lyrics and the play on the nuances and just the cleverness of it. She's a very clever writer. We know that by now. This album for me feels like such a different artist. Yes, she's got some incredible past work, like Cry Baby, obviously. You know, I love, love, love. However, this is so mature. It's got everything. It's got the metaphors. It's got the story. It's got the world, the flow through the nonstop album. Album is just incredible how every song just catches you off guard and you're like what are we going on now it's such a journey album clearly I wasn't the only one that loved it, it became one of my most viewed videos this year evil blew up on TikTok for me and got like 200,000 views I guess in that sense it becomes exciting when an album you love so much just you know is resonating with other people the deluxe that got released while I love those songs I still listen to just the standard album because for me I just love the flow through I love womb going into death void oh my god nymphology again just the connectability with so many people. I love reading all your comments of how it you know, affected you and just how it was there for you or how you could resonate with it. I mean, Evil, obviously, I mean, a lot of us can relate to that. That song is probably the song that has caught me off guard the most out of all my reactions, you know, in the last couple of years. The fact that it's number one, I can still get chills just thinking about it, proves to me that, yeah, this was my number one album. The flow through, again, the <laughs> take a shot every time. The flow through, you can listen to this album and just have it there, or you can just really tune in and be like, yeah, let's go, what's that next song? And just seeing her artistry, artistry, art artistry grow from Crybaby to this is just incredible. And that's my top 10. <sighs> What do you guys think? Let me know down below. What were your top 10 albums of 2023? You have to obviously comment. I need to know. I also know that I missed some. I was going to do honorary mentions. I've got three written down and I was like, oh, I'm not just going to say it because then people will say they should have been in it. However, Mitski, The Word is Inhospitable. She's in there. Kylie Minogue, Tension, Olivia Rodrigo, Guts. They're three that honorable mentions. They really did produce some great stuff. However, while they are sick albums, they just didn't have as much of an impact on me. I guess longevity wise. Mitski, absolutely probably the strongest out of them because I love that type of music and I've listened the album a lot so that definitely probably would be my number 11 if I had to pick however it's top 10 only that's 2023 wrapped up another year done another top 10 albums if you've watched any of the reactions thank you so much if you've liked if you've commented it means the world thank you so much for being on this journey with me if you haven't hit subscribe I'd love to grow the channel and keep giving you guys more reaction videos let me know if there's any albums that I missed from this year that I need to get onto clearly they won't make the list however I'm very keen if there's some albums that I've missed because there's obviously so many albums out there that I can't I literally physically and mentally and 
and emotionally just kind of get to. If you want to join my Discord, links are down below. I'm on Instagram at Griffin. All that jazz. I'm for 2024. Can't wait for what songs are going to shook us to our cause and make us cry. The best stuff. Other than that. Hope you're out. I'm Ron. Ready again.